We're glad to know you're still there and uh, this is the breakfast on plus tv africa we said we're coming back to talk about the um, the protest that is scheduled for first of august to the 10th of august there's more momentum as you begin to protest ahead of august 1. nigerian youths in niger state have begun protests on the abuja kaduna road ahead of a nationwide hunger protest scheduled for august 1 to 12 under the hashtag end government this comes after Niger State Governor Mohamed Bago stated that the state's youths uh, would not protest, describing them as peace-loving. Protesters were seen carrying placards with messages like enough is enough and hardship is unbearable and chanting anti-government songs. Soldiers interviewed to intervened to calm the protesters, asking them to wait until the official protest date. Despite assurances from local organizers, the governor's announcement of food palliatives to prevent protests, some youths still took to the streets. The Niger State Police Command confirmed the protest, stating that law enforcement quickly dispersed the demonstrators. There were no roadblocks and the area is reported to be calm. Okay, protest is gathering momentum everywhere. And we hear that even international media is beaming satellites on Nigeria to see what is going to happen. Remember that before the 2014 election, uh, it was projected that Nigeria was going to split into a lot of federations, a lot of uh, countries, because we couldn't stay together beyond 2014. But here we are, still one indivisible nation. And countries are saying this time around, it might just happen that uh, a lot of people will break away and there's going to be war, there's going to be civil unrest and all that. They're predicting that for Nigeria. But we are Nigerians. We are the ones who know what, we, what is good for us and what is not good for us. And we are peace-loving people. However, I'd like to appeal again, like I've always said, that when people are in government, they should be guarded uh, the way they say things, the way they, they come out to make pronouncements and all that. People are saying they are hungry and they want to register their grievances by going on the streets to carry placards and say, hey, do this X, Y, Z. I'm not sure they're going to say you must do it that same day, but they want to tell you some of the things that they want you to know and give you a warning that it might escalate if it continues this way. And then you borrow a leaf from there, get schooled from there, and then you know what you're supposed to do. And then every governor is coming out to say, people in my state will not protest. People in my state cannot protest. People in my state must not protest. That's what all the governors are saying. Some even are saying, like in the Southeast, the governors came and say, Ndibo will not be part of the protest. Like people are not hungry in that land. I'm not saying I support protests, that it has to happen and all that. Nobody does, because it shouldn't even get to this point in the first place. But I think it will be better and it will douse more tension if the governors, the president and everybody in government talks in a way that the people will understand that they know what they are even passing through. How can a governor come to say that why are Nigerians protesting? How can someone from the presidency come to say why are Nigerians protesting? It is labeled end bad governance. It is also labeled hunger protest. And you're still asking why Nigerians are protesting. You do not know why Nigerians are protesting. That is, to a lot of people, an insult. So we should be careful what we say as people who are uh, at the helm of affairs, people that others are looking up to, people that should be making decisions for us, people that are perceived to be sitting on our own uh, destinies and all that. We should be careful because if you say that this country is moving in the right direction. Uh, the president is doing well. And then the average man on the street is not seeing what well is being done by the president, even though the president may really be doing well. Then the next thing to think about is that it is because you are seeing that wellness that you're talking about and he is not seeing the wellness. And so it will fuel more anger. So we should be careful. As that's, that's just a note of warning. If the police will come out and say, we're going to deal with you, the army comes out and says, we're going to deal with you, the governors come out and say, we're going to deal with you, and some people who are perceived to be paid people will come out and say, you don't protest in our state, and all those kind of things. Those are things that instead of correcting what is wrong,
will now fuel more anger in the people. It shouldn't be said. So whoever is responsible should rein in these people, hold them and say, don't say this thing. We heard that the child, one child of the president came and gave conditions and, and warned the people that they must not pr protest. We know that a bag of rice for 150,000 will not affect the president's daughter. So she shouldn't be talking. I'm not saying as a Nigerian, she doesn't have the right to say one or two things, but we should know some things will flame, will, 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 will poke the embers of, our, of the fire of the people. So we should be careful how we say it. We should be diplomatic enough to say the things that we need to say. Um, but let, there are some people who can say you're stupid and then you'll be smiling because of the way they said it. Let's be, let's be careful how we make utterances and all that. Not everybody is seeing the, the, the direction the country is going. Not everybody is seeing the tomorrow that people in government might be seeing. Not everybody is seeing whatever wellness there is in our country. Not everybody is buying the story that the president is doing well. The president may mean well, the president may really be doing well, but how much of this are the people seeing? That is the question. So when people say they want to um, protest and they give you a date, or it's like I'm Robert saying that they're going to come to your house on a particular date, it's either you have the chance to uh, fortify yourself so that when they come, you can meet them fire for fire, or you provide the things in your house that if they come, they can get and let you leave. Uh, maybe this, this money is money they want, and you want to keep the money in your house when they come, you give them, or you run away from your house. You have so many options. And that means that person means well for you. So now a date has been set for a peaceful demonstration. I think that's my opinion. I was not sent to do that. Uh, like we say in Nigeria, who sent you? Nobody sent me. But I think that what we should be talking about here is to highlight the things that government is trying to do, what the things that government has done already, and what, what we can hope to see in the nearest future so that the tensions could be doused. Because at this moment, whatever you say, my lecturer used to say, meanings are in people, not in words. You might say something and you mean well, but it will be misinterpreted and taken out of context, and then they will use that against you and do what they're supposed to do. I don't want a protest. I want to be able to come to work and do my work, uh, read my news, present my program, just meet with my friends and family and everybody. We should be in peace. I don't want a protest. I don't want something that will disrupt the activities uh, that I've been doing my routine for the day. And I'm sure a lot of people are of the same opinion. We don't want protests. But when you're talking, whether you're a governor, whether you're somewhere, so long as you're someone who is perceived as not suffering enough like the people, the ordinary men on the street, please be careful what you say. And for those people who are protesting against the protest, uh, if it is peaceful now that you're protesting, please, when the other people want to protest as well, because it's possible that they will still protest, when they want to protest as well, also give them the chance they have given you now to protest, to do your own protest, so that it will not be hijacked, as we have been told that it will be hijacked. If there's a possibility of protesting in Nigeria in peace. So if you can do it in peace, let others also do it in peace. And let the police, now that they have um, promised us that they are going to take care of protesters, actually take care of these protesters. And let them fish out those people who are trying to foment trouble, because according to them, they have already had credible intelligence that there are people trying to disrupt this protest and hijack it for their personal gains. If you know these people, please arrest them now. Don't wait till the 1st of August before you arrest them. And let me also appeal to the traditional institution that has decided to put a raw festival during the time of protest. I think the timing is terrible. I know that traditional institution is independent and all that. Some people would say you cannot stop tradition just because something is going to happen in our country. Tradition must be held. But I think the timing is terrible. And even if your intentions are good, people will still see it as uh, the Oro Festival being used as a political tool right now. So I think you should shift it a little bit. Uh, it is too late to say, hold it now before the, the protest. But I think you should shift it so that there will not be a clash of interest. Because when that comes, 
there are people who are just waiting for the Oro Festival to come and let them do what they are worst. And the Oro Festival uh, is go also going to show their might as, you know, this is a traditional thing and we have, we have to do it. It's, uh, it's our land and all that. Please shift it a little bit further than uh, the time of the protest so that there will not be a clash. Because if there is a clash, it will not be to the interest of anybody. No matter what tradition is, tradition is supposed to hold people together in unity, in love, make people abide by the law and be disciplined and all that. So please shift your role festival because the timing is very, very bad. That's, that's, I don't know how rigid the laws of Oro are. I don't know what it means to even celebrate the Oro festival. We don't have it where I come from. I just know a little bit about it, but I think it is possible to shift it. And if that is uh, true, please shift it away from the time that this uh, uh, first, this uh, march or protest is going to take place. We also had that the NANS, that is the National Association of Nigerian Students, is planning for a walk of peace during uh, the same time that the hunger protest is going to take place. I think it was bad timing as well. Um, we've already had some protests against the protests, and if you have not done yours, I think you should leave yours still after that, because whether one is good, the other one is bad, so long as they are at divergent or they are different uh, directions, they should never happen at the same time because that might bring trouble to us. We don't want trouble. We just want to make our voices heard. Whether they are the bad voices or the good voices, let someone hear us. That's what Nigerians are saying. Well, first of uh, um, August is going to come. We pray that it's going to be peaceful and then we are still going to go about our normal duties and those to whom the messages are directed will listen and do the needful. Well, this is wishing Nigeria peace from here on out. And this is where we draw the curtain on the program this morning. Thank you for being a part of it and stay blessed. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyamuguru Agaji.